Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ben Salmon Township Council meeting. Today's date is October 13th, 2020. Uh, I'd like to bring you up to date that if you have any public comments uh, at this time, you can email them to public comments at bensalempa.gov, which is P-U-B-L-I-C-C-O-M-M-E-N-T-S at B-E-N-S-A-L-E-M-P-A dot G-O-V. And of course, prior to that, if you had any comments, you could always mail them at any time to 2400 Byberry Road, and um, it will be mailed to our Ben Salem Township Clerk, Debbie McBreen, and she'll forward them to us. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce you to our council members and those in attendance. We have myself, council member. I'm the president of council, Ed Kisselback. We have Joe Polari, our council vice president. Joe, just put your hand up so we all know who you are, gentlemen. Joseph Knowles, our council secretary. There's Joe. We have Jesse Sloan, our council member, and Ed Toke Majin, also a council member. Also in attendance this evening, we have the Honorable Mayor Joseph D. Geralamo. We have Joe Paizo. We have Russ, our township solicitor, Russ Benner. He's our township engineer. Quentin Neron, he's our inspector, principal inspector, and Debbie uh, McBreen, our township recording secretary. I think I got everyone. I'm looking around. Yes. Okay. We'd like to begin the meeting by having everyone please rise for a moment, silent meditation or prayer, and that's going to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. The uh, second agenda item is uh, public comment. Uh, we're going to forego that at this time, and if uh, we have any comments to come in relative to uh, the subject matter, I'm going to have Mr. Pizer read them at that time, according to the agenda item at, at that point. Mr. Pizer, do we have any add-ons this evening uh, to our council agenda? Uh, yes, uh, if we, uh, if council is of a mind, uh, Mr. Uh, Kisselback, uh, if we could amend the agenda to add an item under other business, um, which would be agenda item number nine. Um, we have a proposed resolution authorizing the transfer of funds from the Township Trust Fund to the Township Capital Improvements Fund and also authorizing an amendment to the Township 2020 budget. Uh, of course, we'll go into greater detail when we get to that item um, if Council uh, agrees to uh, amend the agenda. All right, so at this time, I'm going to ask for a, a motion to be put on the floor to, agend, to amend the agenda. So moved. Do we have a motion on, on the floor? Toke Majin? Second. Second by Polari. And uh, all those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 Any abstentions? Unanimous. So we'll, we'll discuss that on agenda item number nine. Okay, moving on to uh, agenda item number three. We have the approval of the council minutes. It's for the meeting of September 29th, 2020. Gentlemen, if you have the opportunity to review that, if you have any changes, any deletions, any corrections, you can do it at this time. If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept them as proposed. Uh, I have one correction on the bottom of page two. Uh, in the response paragraph, uh, noted um, felt the wetland certification would be non-compliable. That should be non-applicable. The very last line of page two, uh, Ms. McGarvey, yes. non-compliable should be non-applicable. Oh yeah, there it is. None. That was the only correction that I had. Okay, with that, would you like to put a motion on the floor? Uh, I will make a motion that we approve the minutes as revised. I'll second. We have a motion on the floor. Sloan, seconded by Noel. Joe Noel. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 
and against any abstentions unanimous Sloan was first and uh, Knowles second it no problem moving on to agenda item number four this is a consideration of final land development this is for Lenar MPA LLC this is on State Road or this is the Waterside phase three and this is a residential use the zoning classification is MXD mixed use the tax map parcels are as such 265-22 264-138 is there anyone uh, representing this applicant mr yes mr. I, I, I brought uh, attorney Greg Edelman into the uh, into oh. the Zoom. All right, I see it, Greg Kisselback, yeah. as well as Dan Stewart, and uh, Mr. Edelman advised uh, that Mr. Bott would Mr. Bott be A R N A Engineering, Arna Engineering, Mr. Edelman. That, that's correct, Joe. Okay, so we will admit him. There's also a Tench Tileman. Yes, as well. Is he with you as well? Yes, with Lenar. Okay, then we will admit uh, Tench into the meeting as well. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Then how about if we do this? How about if we swear all your witnesses in at this time? Mr. Pazzi, you want to read the... Uh... Uh, for, the for the land development hearing, Mr. Um, Kisselbeck, that wouldn't be necessary. Last meeting, as you'll recall, the conditional use hearing did require the swearing of witnesses. Okay. But such is not the case for the land development. Okay, we're fine with that then. Let's move on. All right, Greg, I'm going to ask you to uh, give us a general overview of what's happening with the Phase 3 project. And then from that point, we're going to move on to a, a letter from TNM uh, dated September 23rd from Russ Benner, our township engineer. So why don't you give us an overview of what sure. you're asking to do? Thank you, Ed. Good evening. Good evening, members of council and, and Mr. Mayor as well, and uh, members of uh, township staff. Um, I'm here this evening on behalf of Lenar for uh, what is basically an amended phase three approval for the water side. Um, this is the Lenar's last phase on the project. They're proposing it's 165 townhome units. The amendment is a very minor amendment um, all that's really happening here is there is a change in terms of the uh, size and type of units. The prior approval had f uh, five unit buildings. They've been replaced with stacked units. Everything else on the plan, the roads, alleys, stormwater management locations, access, they all remain unchanged. Um, so overall, the um, proposed total unit count for Waterside, which was approved at 605 units, is now going to be 598 so there's less units um, that are going to be constructed here than what was previously approved other than that uh mr kisselback and members of council there's no other changes here uh, for this proposed phase three uh, amended final approval okay do any of your principals what would like to add anything at this time no, not at this time but they're happy to answer any questions council or the township may have Gentlemen, do you have any uh, general questions at this time? I do, Mr. President. Um, Greg, it's Councilman Polari. Good evening. Um, you're saying you're doing stacked units. So how many units are in those stacked units? Uh, Dan, Is it two, you, three? I, I, I don't know. I, uh, Dan, you're on mute. So if you just unmute. And Dan Stewart from Sorry. the- Sorry, Sorry. Yeah, I'd answer that question, gentlemen. Uh, yes, it's two units per stacked building. So be a top and a bottom, if you will. Okay, so that's two That's two houses in the one stacked unit. So what's your total housing people that can buy units? Because it's two units per each one. You were approved for 605. You're saying 500 and some, but you're, you're uh, doing two units uh, per building. So what's that final count come out to? We're counting them separately, each unit separately. How many is that? So it's still 598 total. Even though you're stacking, you're doing stacking units. So one unit with two places would be two. 
Yeah, that's right. And we're counting it as two units. So there's less buildings, but there's two units per building. So that total Correct. is five. That's, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't doing less yeah. units, but with more more uh, housing areas for this. So I, that's why I asked my question. That, that's correct. Uh, that, so the number is actually less than what's approved. Thank you. Okay. okay You're I, I had a question, uh, Ed. Sure, John. Uh, yeah, on the, on the letter uh, from our engineer uh, dated the 23rd, just to clarify, because uh, it was, I think I know what you're talking about, but it was a little bit confusing. Uh, under discussions, it has approved on March 22nd, 2010, total units 461. Is that at the end of phase three and not the total? And and then it, it had multiple uh, multifamily residential units were 65. You're taking that to zero and you're taking uh, the family townhouse residential units up up to 165 from 94. So is that because that that that, uh, that condo building's not in there, or is that because you're uh, the change in the units? And what what is a multifamily residential unit compared to a family townhouse residential? It, it is because of the change of units, that, and the numbers that you're reading from uh, Joe also don't include. I believe it's 144 uh, multifamily units that are going to be built by I believe Mignotti and, and not right. Lenovo. That, 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 and, and that would be a different phase. That would be. That's correct. So the phase we're approving tonight, the 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 uh, amended plan would actually only have a total of 454, right? Well, it's 165 in this phase. 165, which would make the total 454. That, that's correct. I believe that's the right number. Okay. So, and, and you're eliminating uh, multifamily residential units 65. Uh, what is a multifamily residential unit compared to a family townhouse residential unit? What's the difference? And, I, and maybe either Dan or, or, or Nod could respond to that. I think I know what it is, but I don't think it's clear. And I think that the public's not going to know. Sure, go ahead. Sure, this is on. Then you want to address it or do you want me to go ahead? No, you can go ahead, Anand. You have it. Just turn up your volume a little bit, Anand, because so that everyone can hear you. Sure. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Not you're quite. Not, not really. It's like you're far away. <laughs> Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. So uh, th there are, there used to be uh, five type, five building, or five unit building in uh, approved plans, which are apparently uh, multifamily units in one building. Okay. And that's what, when we, when Russ had said there are multifamily units, that's where the approved plan he had those uh, multifamily units in 65 of them. Uh, they are no longer uh, part of the mix here. Uh, Lennar is only doing townhouses. That's what we are doing here. Okay. Uh, and that has also been changed from phase one and phase two as well. The same same process we are following in phase one and phase two, which we followed in phase three. That's what we are doing in phase three as well. My so, assumption was that you were going from apartments to townhouses. Well, apartment is that, style, not is that correct? Style. Yes. <clears throat> well, not ownership apartments, but apartments. There are style. condos. Yeah, condo, yeah, condo, right. yeah. Condo, condo apartments, apartments to townhouses. Yeah, and, and and I would agree, Mr. Kisselback, that uh, I want I want to clarify that th these are better type units. I think in the long run, they're they're more family individual family units, even though they may be one stacked on top of the other, which are two units. They're pretty big individual units and. Are they saying the ones that are stacked on top of each other? That, are they the ones that still have the like elevator to the second floor? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. The elevator to the second floor, so someone will be able to buy a unit that's one level. Once you're go up the elevator, you're living on one floor up up on one Correct. level. Correct. I, I'm yes. I'm personally p pleased with the change. I think it's an improvement yeah, so to the entire yeah. Waterside uh, Association. I think the neighbors that already have their homes there will be as pleased with that, and I think it's a good move. Plus, you're having less units, which is remarkable in today's uh, market. So I'm happy with everything you're doing so far, as far as what I've seen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify what they were. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Okay, Fred, you were you were con you were taking out the 65 units that Mignotti now owns. Wasn't that included in the housing count in the beginning? 
with the whole whole development? No, and I, I don't I don't believe they were. They were a future units. They you still have the hundred and forty four that Mignani still owns that have to be constructed. I guess you're telling one hundred and forty four added to what you have mm -hmm. comes out to more than six hundred and five, does it not? Plus no. condos? No, it's it's uh it's four hundred and fifty plus the four that I believe were already there that were multifamily from I think phase one that were in okay. existence. And then then the 144. So your total is 598. So you're counting Mignotti's 144 in that in that count. That's correct. Okay. Yep. That's correct. Excuse me, I have a couple of questions. You're on. Um, just a couple of general questions. How far is uh, phase two at this point? Dan, if you want to give Ed an update, please. Yeah, I mean, we're, I would say for the building construction itself, we're probably at about 45% of our total build out of phase two. Okay. Um, okay. And um, I know we saw some water issues down on phase one, and I, I know it wasn't attributed to Lenar, and I know you guys came in and and helped us uh, with uh, with a lot of that. Um, are you seeing any of those similar water issues within phase two? No, sir. Actually, um, you know, with with our assistance and and what we worked on with uh, phase one, it was more so and contained to that muse type area. And when we did our corrections, it seemed to improve very drastically. And we followed up with the the folks in there as well, and okay. didn't receive any additional complaints. All right, great. All right, good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. The other question I have, looking at phase two, I, I know I know we're in phase three at this point, but um, th it looks like there's some public space there, um, some quadrangle around Park Place. Is that is that going to be some public space area there? And, yeah, and the sec second question is, is that going to be completed prior to you starting phase three? It, it will be completed as we construct the homes. The only, the only reason why I say it in that respect is we actually have homes um, that will be constructed up against that, you know, that area. And in order to complete that area, we would want to do it at the same time or in conjunction with those buildings so that way there is no damages. Okay, all right, understood. Um, but the idea is not to wait until you're finished phase three then to go uh -huh. in there. Oh, no, absolutely not. No, that, that area will be finished as that as the units uh, adjacent to that area would be completed. Okay. All right. And uh, further to that question, um, I'm going to bring up the uh, the public space along the river. Um, you know, we, we sell residents on that idea of, of the fact that that's going to be developed at some point. Can you give us some idea as far as when some of that work will, will begin? It's, uh, can you be more specific? You said developed along the river? Yeah, the public areas uh, along the river there. The promenade. The promenade. Yeah. Uh, where like the playground facilities and that, that area? Uh, the, the boardwalk, the walking trail there along, along the river? Yeah, the walking trail that we have is, is currently in place. And that's also with the amenities of the playground area as well. And then when we fin finish and finalize the, uh, the phase two portion, we'll finalize that last piece that's closest to phase three. All right, so just to be clear, so you intend on finishing that public, that area there that is in front of phase two, that, that borders phase two in the river by the time you finish phase two then? Yes. Yeah, because that's big part, it's mostly completed as it sits today. Okay. All right. And then, and then the idea is the only thing that would be remaining is that area that would be sitting in front of phase three. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, great. Thank you. Uh, and then one, Thank one you. last question, Mr. Kisbeck. Uh, this was for, um, for Russ. I, I noticed there was some comments in the letter in terms of uh, great grading and water runoff. Has, has all of those items been addressed? Yeah, I think the one issue that we wanted just to clarify with them is and hold on for a second i want to make sure i'm quoting it correctly yeah the one issue we wanted them to clarify is that there is a piping system in state road that was part of a widening project and that drops down into that mcnaughty piece 
um, makes a connection into an existing pipe. And, and Quentin actually was down there looking at this today too. We wanna to make sure that pipe, which goes from where their widening stormwater system connects down to the canal is operative. We just wanna make sure that pipe is intact. So we comment, I believe that's commented in, in our comments that we wanna just make sure that that, that work's done. So Quentin has been talking, I know to Dan about that and they've been looking at that issue. Okay, thank you. I believe, Dan, I believe the promenade was supposed to go the whole length of the development so people, the public could go down and utilize the, the uh, promenade to either go down, sit, or, you know, walk the river, see, watch what's going on and stuff down there. Is that what you're still going to be giving us, what was originally um, agreed to with Mignotti and Russ? Are we following up on that to make sure that it was done by the original plan, not whatever decisions were made after the fact. It's what we originally planned. Russ, that was addressed to you. Yeah, I wanted, I was hoping that, that Greg would answer, but yes, we are checking <laughs> all the time to make sure that all those things are done in accordance with the plans. Absolutely. And and that includes Bignotti's site too, just because they cut off part of it, that still has to be done before that development is going to get finally approved. Correct. I mean, you can't Correct. just all of a sudden split off a piece from Mignotti and that not have, get a final approval without things not being completed. Correct. All right. And one other thing for you, Russ. Have, have we gotten any more complaints from neighbors down there with what's going on? Are we on top of that or are we uh, are they doing such a great job? We're not getting any complaints. Yeah, I, I know I haven't been called in to any matters. I was initially with phase two on a couple issues. Quentin, if you want to jump in, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I haven't received any complaints lately at all, except from phase one, so. Fantastic, good job, guys. Welcome. Okay, I'm gonna take you from there. Before we go further, we also had Ed, have Ed Rudolph with us. He just joined us not too long ago. He's also one of our solicitors uh, with the original concept, um, so he knows what's happening. If there's any questions, you can refer them to him also. Wave to us, Edward. There he is. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to move on to uh, this uh, letter. I'm going to have uh, Russ uh, work with us on this one, Russ Benner, who, who uh, constructed this memorandum dated September 23rd, 2020. We have the application, uh, which is part A, talks about the... Uh, what was it happening in the past from 2006 on to the present? We have the discussion, which we just actually just went over with the amount of um, homes from the, uh, the decrease of, I think it's six homes uh, from, it was 94 townhomes, 65 multifamily homes, which is 159. <clears throat> now it's at 165 townhomes. Uh, that being said, uh, that was the discussion part. The zoning aspect of it, have you received all the variances that you need uh, for your zoning? Is that correct? Yes. The, the answer is... That's correct. That yes, is, that's yes. correct. Okay. And now we're on to Chapter D, 201, Land Development. Uh, these basically are, I guess, are referring to the original letter of uh, the se September 11th. And because it uh, looks like uh, basically you're complying with, with all the things that are here. Is that correct? Chapter yep. D, 201, sheet yes. 20, 2003, 2103, 2106, 2303, and 2403. So yes, that's correct. Compliance with everything there. Also, correct. I have a question. I'm going to read it, I guess. I have it underlined in my copy that... Um, it is our recommendation that the applicant provide additional documentation that was submitted as part of the um, Highway Occupancy applica um, Application Permit. Um, this is a, to demonstrate that the existing pipe has the adequate capacity. Is that what you were talking about before, uh, yes. Russell? Yes. Yeah, that was exactly it. That was what we were talking about. Okay, and then there's a subnote in stormwater management only drawing 20.03 final site plan phase three the record plan is intended to be approved and signed by the council for recording at this time is that something in addition to what we're doing also or is that the only thing we're signing tonight uh, that'd be it 
Okay. Um, gentlemen, you have any other questions on this? Yeah, I, I just have one more question, not to, not to beat that horse, but I want to make sure that Mr. Polari, Mr. Takmajian's point, uh, and, and others, that uh, I know at one point the uh, front area of the river was was closed to the public because of safety issues, but as this is built out and the phases are finished and it's determined that there's no equipment, uh, construction equipment that could be dangerous to individual people that you know, the public's going to be, uh, that, that area is going to be open up to the public as we go along uh, phase one, two, three. And, and, and as Mr. Polari said, uh, uh, eventually in front of uh, Magna, Magnati's uh, last phase. Yes, correct, sir. Yes, that, that is the intent of, you know, obviously safety first. And as we complete, we'll most certainly have that open. Okay, I just wanted to continue to clarify yes. that on the record. Thank correct. you. Thank you. Okay, and that was addressed not too long ago also. Everything's going to be completed uh, on phase two. By the time phase two is completed, and then move on to phase three, and it will be uh, in conjunction with the construction of phase three in the uh, adjacent area, they'll continue that construction. Is that correct? Completed in an open. Correct. Yes, okay. correct. Okay, gentlemen, your pleasure. I'm asking for a motion to be put on the floor for this development. Is there, do we need yeah, a Yeah, Mr. Mr. Kispeck, I'll make the motion that we uh, approve the revised final land development for tax parcels 26522-02064-138 and 02-064013 uh, considered Waterside phase three. Um, with uh, with the requirement that the, uh, the pipe that Russ had noted um, down to the canal is uh is operative operative and uh i don't think there's anything else in terms of uh what we spoke of and that's that'll be my motion got it john anything else uh, if i could mr talk major so that i, I uh, it's clear then it's your intention that the the applicant will comply with all of the comments set forth in the township engineer's memorandum of september 23rd 2020 um, you mentioned the one regarding the the uh, stormwater pipe in uh, State Road. Uh, there are a few other comments, uh, I believe, uh, chief among them regarding the East Coast Greenway Trail. Um, I assume you want that uh, complied with as well, correct? Yes, I do. Thank you. And then um, I would I would recommend that your motion also reflect that any conditions of any prior approvals or any prior agreements with the township regarding the waterside project that are not specifically superseded by this evening's approval remain in full force in effect. I'll uh, amend my motion to include that verbiage as well. All right, this gentlemen, so we have um, a motion on the floor for approval. This is Jesse. I'll second the motion. Yeah, Jesse Sloan, second the motion. Any additional discussion on that? Before I call the motion, I'm going to ask Mr. Pizer, were there any comments transmitted uh, to the computer emails? Uh, we have received no public comments, uh, either by mail or by email, regarding this application. And the record should also reflect that uh, Mr. Edelman uh, previously provided uh, my office with Very copies good. of the uh, proof of notice to adjacent property owners and those uh, um, that proof uh, appeared to be in order, um, allowing for us to proceed with this evening's hearing. All right, then, gentlemen, that being said, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 And against? Any abstentions? Unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you. It was nice to, nice to see everyone. Be well. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks again. Project. We love what you're doing down there. Down there. It looks great. Keep Thank up you. the work. Well Thank done. you. Thanks again. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Okay, moving on. Thank you, gentlemen. Moving on to agenda item number five. This is a consideration of a minor subdivision. This is from Manish Shah, and the address is 2866 Wine Avenue. This is a single-family detached residence. This is an R2 residential area, and a tax map parcel number is 2-39-86. Township uh, clerk received a message from
from uh, the applicant's engineer in advance yep. of this evening's meeting, um, indicating that uh, based on discussions with Mr. Benner from, uh, I guess, last week, um, he's had an opportunity to speak with his client, and they're going to revise the plans and uh, resubmit them. Um, they're asking, therefore, that council um, approve a, um, a tabling of the application to your meeting of November 9th. Um, the email from the engineer indicates that Mr. Benner believes he can have the uh, revisions reviewed in time for them to make that uh, meeting date. Uh, I trust that is accurate, Mr. Uh, Mr. Benner. Yeah, that, that Joe, that is accurate. Um, I, uh, I just think we, uh, the applicant has to take care of some paperwork um, before we can review that. But uh, as long as that gets done, we'll have our review in time for the uh, meeting on the 9th. All right, thank you, gentlemen. I ask for a motion. I'm and, sorry. And even though we're not proceeding with this evening's, uh, with that application this evening, we did uh, receive um, an email from a neighboring property owner, and since this is the day, since, since we're operating scheduled. the way we're we're operating, um, if uh, if council would uh, indulge, it, it's very short. Um, it's a message. It's an email from Chris Estel on McKinley Avenue, um, indicating that he is a direct neighbor of this property. He's against the building of another house so close to his fence. The house on the other side of him is on top of the fence as it is and there are windows above his privacy fence the property is a mess and not taken care of since the applicant bought it um, the owner of the property already owns another adjacent property to mr estel's and the house is eight feet or so away from the fence and the windows are above it it shouldn't be allowed to build this close to a property line um, so that's uh, the messages from Mr. Estel that we received during this evening's meeting in regard to that application. All right, so we have that on record. Uh, so when we discuss this, we'll keep that in mind relative to the, uh, if there's any waivers requested for uh, or, or zoning. I don't, I don't know if there's any zoning issues relative to the placement of the proposed homes. And we'll consider it at that time. But this time, I'm going to ask for a motion to be put on the floor to That's approve good. the tabling of this agenda, item number five, until November 9th. So <laughs> We have a motion. No, that, uh, Ed Tuck, Major. God bless you. Second on a motion by? I'll second a motion. Mr. Knowles. Yeah. All those in favor signify with an aye. The date's certain in November 9th. Aye. All those in favor signify aye. with an aye. Aye. Vote aye. And against? Any abstentions? All right, November 9th it is. So, Mr. Estel, this matter will now be heard by the council at its meeting of November 9th. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, moving on to agenda item number, thanks, Joe. Agenda item number six is a request for a waiver, curbs and sidewalks, installation, subject to the payment and fee of lieu of, and this is for Judith Todd, 2549 Lincolnia Avenue, Tax map parcel is 2-7-77. Uh, right is there anything you need to explain on this, Joseph? That uh, I would uh, defer to Mr. Uh, Benner or Mr. Neron for that application. Okay. Mr. Yeah, this, Benner, anything you it, want to add to this? Is it it's simple. It's is it appropriate area to have to have no curves? Yeah, there's no curb or sidewalk in the area. This is in conjunction with a, uh, a new single family house that's going in there. Um, and there's no curb or sidewalk. So we would recommend the council consider the fee in Lua. All right, gentlemen, any comments? If not, I'll accept the motion. This is Jesse Sloan. I'll make a motion that we approve as presented. I'll right, second. Motion on the Ed floor. Second on the uh, motion. Jesse Sloan. Seconded by Ed Took Major. Took Majin a second. Any additional discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 And against and abstentions unanimous. 
this meeting is going so well, I'm going to start getting a twitch in my neck or something. I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> okay, moving on to agenda item number seven. Consideration of an escrow release for uh, developers is Ivy State Road, LLC, release number two, 3750 State Road. The tax map parcels are several, and they are 2-79-9-4, 2-79-9-52, as well as 79-9-6, also 2-79-10, and the final is 2-80-28. This is for ESCO release in the amount of $369,188. Mr. Benner, we'll let you take this one. Yeah, this is essentially the property that the Amazon is going to be developing. This is the, the last escrow release um, from the, or, or the current owner of the uh, property. Um, all the work has been, it's been completed there. Um, Quentin and his group, uh, the inspectors inspected the property, all the final punch list items were addressed, um, and we're recommending that this final escrow um, amount be released. Um, there are no um, uh, maintenance items on this since there's no real public improvements associated with this. So uh, that saying, all the work's been done, um, and we're fine with releasing out the escrow on. All right, Quentin, let me ask you, I know you and I have been down there several times on that back property, the pie-shaped property as well. Uh, has that all been resolved? Is that taken care of? Where are we on that part of it? That is being done, I believe, in phase three, as part of Amazon, if Russ can verify with me on that. Yeah, we reached, um, Councilman Kisselback, we reached out to Amazon with that. And since that is part of their phase three development, um, anyway, they agreed that they would take care of that as part of their development of that property. Okay, so it's online to be uh, addressed in phase three. Correct. All right, thank you. Correct. So you know that. Is that the, the site grading, the earthwork line item that you've noted here? Um, I don't understand the word you said. We, it's the $50,000 release with a footnote saying the future L&D will be adjusting the outstanding area of concern regarding slope maintenance. Yeah, yeah so that's all part of, yeah, that was all, I'll make sure I was unmuted. Uh, that is all part of, um, there was a lot of miscellaneous things that they had to do for grading work that was done. Uh, the biggest thing was the pie shape in the back that wasn't completed. The reason why that was because it was outside their L&D for their MPDS permit was not so that's being adjusted for Amazon so they can get in there regrade and make that like everybody wanted to okay is there any concern with I know that there was early on some issues with some of the neighboring property owners with some of the work uh, this doesn't affect them at all does it that this work is being delayed no not for the pie pace or well for any question now, I know one, well, I forget the gentleman's name, I guess he would be on the southern side. There were some drainage issues that were cleaned up, regraded in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, but all the other areas were draining fine. The only areas we had some issues with were the infiltration basins, but that was months ago. That was already addressed previously. Okay, great. Thank you. Mr. Paizo, I, I have a question for you, and I'm sure Mr. Benner can chime in. Wasn't there an escrow supposed to be put for the turning lanes and the traffic areas and things that are supposed to be done there? Who, who's on the, on the, you know, who's responsible for that? And are we uh, holding an escrow in case they don't do that work? Yes, uh, your recollection is correct, Mr. Polari, and that uh, um, was discussed in, at some length during the the land development hearing for Amazon. Um, at this juncture, um, the, the remaining items of the land development under Ivy, chief among them the pie-shaped area that we've talked about, um, have all been assigned to and assumed by Amazon. So Amazon has agreed to uh, take care of those remaining pieces of the, of the Ivy land development approval. Um, and Amazon has under its land development approval with the township, and it will be a part of the land development agreements when they make their way to you. Um, the requirement that those monies, I believe the amount is two and a half million, is that, is that correct, Mayor? 
Right. Yes. Um, is going to be held in escrow by the township to handle all of the off-site um, roadway improvements until um, PennDOT approves them and and uh, uh, Amazon builds them. So uh, at, at this juncture, uh, what what's being released is the original Ivy land development that essentially provided for the construction of the building. Um, the remaining pieces of that are being released and any pieces that weren't completed are now going to be and are um, a part of the, the land development for Amazon. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to get that on the record so we were assured that uh, this was going to be taken care of and we would have that with the Amazon Amazon plan, plan before we release the money. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, thank, thanks for asking that, uh, Joe, because I, uh, I wanted to clarify that too because it looked like a zero amount. I wanted to make sure that, that we realize that there's money held for what Amazon is responsible for doing to finish their project. Yeah, just to further, so was that a, line, a letter of credit, Mr. Paisa? Uh, I'm sure they're not posting cash in that amount. So, yes, I would expect it will be a, a letter of credit when it comes through. So uh, do we hold on to the letter of credit from Ivy until we receive that from Amazon? This is from Amazon. At, at this juncture, no. Um, at this juncture, what we've received from Amazon <laughs> and ivy is the written agreement that ivy is now on the hook for anything and everything else as part of their land development so it's been a, the the ivy is being zeroed out at this point um, okay that agreement's not made yet though okay. amazon hasn't agreed to to have having that money held in escrow are they or we we did do that in our last our meeting. Amazon, Amazon has agreed hey, right. to the escrow of yes. two and a half million just for the off-site improvements and then whatever other escrow is required for their on-site improvements, including the pie-shaped area, all of that is going to be posted as well. Okay, but if they walk away, then we're stuck. If Amazon works, walks away from the deal and we give Ivy back all their money, then we're stuck right. in, in, in nowhere, no man's land. I, I don't understand. Think, let me just uh, cut in a minute. I think what happens is that the uh, roadway uh, is being redone because of Amazon. Uh, Ivy was out of it at this point, and their road is done as far as Ivy's concerned. But because of Amazon coming in with the additional traffic and everything, they were they have to come up with the additional money, which is two and a half million. Our agreement with Ivy was that they were going to put a turning lane in. So that was agreed to with the original plan. That's not done. Yeah, so turning lane's in. Is it in and it's completed? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, but we haven't received that uh, letter of credit yet then from Amazon. Uh, I apologize. I don't know if that's been received by the township yet or not. Well, it's, it, yeah, but it's, it's Amazon's responsibility to do the road work under their agreement that we already approved, and you know they're they're going to have to do it. I think if, Amazon. If, if they if they don't post the the money, they're not going to occupy the building. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. Gonna, they're not going to be able to. But Amazon's going to be able to handle it. I would can, think. can I cut in again? I apologize. I don't like to cut in. Uh, Amazon has already gotten all their permits and are, are fitting the building at millions of dollars inside. They will not be allowed to occupy that building until what you just said, everything is done and the escrow's up and everything's in place. They they won't get a UNO to occupy the building. Right. All right. Okay. All right. Th thanks for clarifying, Mayor. Uh, I have, uh, Mr. Kinsberg, I have one other quick question for, uh, for I guess, Quentin. There. So I know we talked a lot about the pizza pie and how Amazon's going to take that, but there was also some talk, and maybe this might have been what um, Councilman Sloan had noted, there was drainage, uh, some unfinished work for drainage that was at the rear of uh, an abutting property, um, I guess on the on the south side. It is, where are we up with that? That was corrected uh, actually before COVID, along okay, that up. fence line right there. Yeah, so that's all been completed and done? Yeah, that's been checked after rains and it's been draining out fine. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, we're 
Are we going to have a motion or? Well, or I'm finding out if you're finished with your questions. We were doing so good until Mr. Kissel. Uh, Mr. Kisselback jinxed it, so we I had know. to ask a lot of questions <laughs> on this one. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving right along with the request of Councilman Knowles, I ask for a motion to be put on the floor. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the escrow release number two for Ivy State Road property uh, on the advice of our uh, engineers uh, that the work has been done as documented and uh, and our uh, by uh, and our finance department will check that uh, we're giving back three thousand uh, Three hundred and sixty-nine thousand one hundred eighty-eight dollars, and the remaining will be zero at that point. I'll make an amendment. We approve this uh, escrow release. I'll second. We have a motion on the floor, Mr. Knowles, whispered out to us, and we have a second by Councilman Polari. Any additional discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? That is unanimous. Okay, moving on to agenda item number. Eight. We have public comment. Mr. Pizer, is there any uh, letters that had come in this evening? Um, we've received two, uh, two public comments. Um, the first is from Joseph Connolly, uh, Bristol Pike. Um, it is in four parts. Part one, when is the dirt pile going to be removed? I received fines for erosion and was found guilty by Ben Salem Township. I am currently fighting this matter in Doylestown. Also, 100% of my neighbor's water runoff from parking areas, building gutters, and the dirt pile run directly through my property, causing washout issues. Then I received the fine for erosion. Why is this happening? And why is he, my neighbor, not receiving any fines? And why is this not getting resolved? Number two, I received a fine for erecting a retaining wall without a permit and the wall not having a railing by the apartment complex. And when my attorney asked Christine Savage and Quentin Neron who does the wall belong to, they both stated, I am not sure who the wall belongs to. Item three, for all township council members, when a property in your township receives a tax parcel number, the property has been surveyed by a professional land surveyor, which the county has to sign off on, which then makes it a legal document and determines how much property tax to charge you, and then gives you your tax map, which clearly shows your property lines. And in this case, my property line runs directly through my neighbor's building, and it has happened in the early 80s when Bob Olander built the illegal addition over the property line, in which, according to Ben Salem Township, was a rejected subdivision plan dated December 18, 1984. Four, I have called five commercial real estate companies to try to sell my property, but not one would list it for sale because the tax map shows the half the building on my property. I have had seven surveys done by professional land surveyors with five of them showing different locations that are 25 feet away from the tax map line in my case, it is a half acre of land I am losing. All seven surveyors I have hired all refuse to give me a ALTA certified survey, which to me draws a red flag, all in which I've offered thousands and thousands of dollars, but no one would do it for me. Sincerely, Joseph Connolly. Mr. Uh, Pizer, do you have any comments? I know you have seen some of this go through the courts. I, can only, I know it's not our issues. I can only let the township know that uh, both Mr. Connolly and the neighbor to whom he refers in this uh, email um, are both in court with the township in regard to a variety of citations. Um, some of the issues for which the neighboring property owner was cited, I have been advised by the township engineer um, have been complied with, and um, those that have not been complied with, the township continues to move forward with prosecution. Um, similarly, um, with Mr. Connolly, those items for which he has been cited that have not yet been resolved, the township is moving forward with the, um, the, the litigation. 
um, we, I believe consistent with the direction um, from everyone in township government. Um, you know, we were told, move forward, everything that's not in compliance, site, get compliance, and that is the process in which uh, the township finds itself at the moment. Um, Mr. Pizer, with far, respect to you, in so far the, as Mr. Connolly's citations are concerned, um, there, we were actually in court, uh, not me personally, but the township and attorneys from my office were in court in Doylestown on Friday. Um, that hearing in the middle was, um, uh, it was a Friday afternoon. Um, the hearing wasn't completed. It's been continued by the judge, and so we're in the middle of that litigation. Um, it's in as much as we have both property owners in court at this point, to the extent that the council would like to discuss it, I don't think it behooves the township's position uh, in terms of ongoing litigation to discuss it uh, in this forum. If council would like to uh, uh, adjourn to executive session, we can certainly discuss it in greater detail. Mr. Paiso, when is the hearing continued to? Um, I was told uh, by Mr. Farrell uh, this morning that uh, the judge did not set a, a continuation date Friday afternoon when the hearing was uh, adjourned, um, and the, uh, the township and Mr. Connolly are waiting to receive a, the continuation date from, uh, from the court administrator. Court Understood. Administrator. Thanks. Okay. I believe that we should uh, talk about this in executive session as there are issues that I've made the township aware of and some things that happened today that need to be discussed, need to be discussed by this council, the mayor and our, our, uh, our staff. So um, I don't know how you want to handle it, if you want to do a separate uh, executive session or if you... We can you do it after we adjourn the meeting here, we can continue our conversation via the Zoom, and it will not be broadcast, okay? So we'll, after we adjourn the meeting, we will have an executive meeting regarding this issue, okay? Thank, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay. The second, the second um, the comment that was received is from a Krista Watson on Ridge Avenue in Trevos. On Sunday night, October 11th, there was a Halloween event at Neshaminy Mall. The music was so loud that it was vibrating all the way over to Trevos off Brownsville Road until 11.45 p.m. We finally called the Ben Salem Police Department at 11.20 p.m. to see why this event was still going on. The dispatcher advised that they had had numerous complaints from 10 p.m. on. He said the police were aware of it and were going to shut it down. Per the Township Code Section 149-3, Noise Levels, there are sound level limits that were clearly exceeding the maximum levels at this event. The also went past the 10 p.m. curfew for the event. Why did Ben Salem Township allow this event to go on in violation of time and noise level after receiving numerous complaints from Township residents? Thank you, Crystal Watson. Okay, well, we'll forward that on to our director of public safety, that email, and he, he can address that individual directly. Okay, Mr. Pizer? That's fine, and in fact, I've already, I've already forwarded it on to Mr. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Harron. Okay. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kisselbeck, real quick, um, just to put it on record, I, I did also receive a, a number of complaints as well, um, and it wasn't necessary. I think it went on every all weekend, and it, because of Sunday night being a school night, there was uh, a greater concern with the, the noise volume that went so late. So. Okay. Duly noted. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, does that's it for the uh, That's it for emails? Uh, that's it for public comment. Public sir. comment. All right, then agenda item, we had uh, just changed that to uh, talk about the, um, the fund uh, release and the... Um, approval of council uh, to the administration for the um, trifecta property. Yes. So the minutes of uh, this meeting should reflect that the council met in executive session on Tuesday, October 6th um, here at the township building. Uh, present for the executive session 
where the five members of council, the mayor, the director of administration, the finance manager, and me. Uh, the matter discussed was the um, ongoing uh, or the, the pending um, condemnation of the Trifecta Sport Club property uh, in Trevos. Um, as council and I trust the public will recall, um, earlier this month in, in, at the council meeting of uh, August 26, I believe, um, the township adopted resolution 2020-13, uh, which authorized the condemnation of the property located at 4668 East Bristol Road, which is identified and commonly known as the Trifecta Sporting Club, uh, previously the United German Hungarian Club. Um, consistent with that um, uh, authorization for the administration to proceed with the condemnation of the property, uh, the administration uh, has been in contact with the property owner um, and others holding uh, uh, property interests in the township and um, uh, the township has also had the property appraised um, as have the property owners. All of that has led the township to determine that um, between the cost of acquiring the property and the cost of improvements that will need to be made to the building and to the fields and to the parking lot that the township is likely looking at an investment of somewhere between three and a half and five million dollars. Um, in order to um, move forward with the condemnation and payment to the property owners of the money due them and to begin with the work that's going to need to be done on the property, um, the township administration uh, is recommending to the township council and did recommend during the executive session that rather than going out into the market and bar borrowing <coughs> money um, at uh, commercial lending rates, that the township transfer money out of the township trust fund to the township as a loan to itself um, in an amount not to exceed $5 million. Um, to the extent the township transfers money out of the trust fund and into the township capital improvement fund, the township would then um, begin um, charging itself and, and charging interest back to the trust fund and that the township would be paying the money back to the trust fund over a period of 20 years um, at an interest rate of 1.18%. Um, the resolution that is before you this evening is consistent with all of the terms that were presented to council during the executive session. And at this point, the administration is asking that the council please uh, approve the resolution, resolution that is before you this evening that would allow for the township to transfer the money out of the trust fund to repay the money back to the trust fund in the manner that I just discussed and providing for the township to advise the council at any time any of the money up to that $5 million that's being approved, any time any of that money is being transferred out of the trust fund, the township would come back and notify the council when that money is being moved. Um, the, secondly, because the purchase of this property was not anticipated at the time of the adoption of the township's 2020 budget, um, the resolution also provides for the amendment of the township 2020 budget, both to reflect the transfer of money out of the trust fund and into the capital improvement fund, and secondly, to indicate that the township will now be purchasing, if you will, the trifecta sporting good pro property and making capital improvements to the same. So uh, with that, uh, the resolution that is before you this evening is in a form um, consistent <coughs> with the description I've just provided and is acceptable for your consideration and approval this evening. All right, gentlemen, we're all together. We discussed this in detail. Is there, are there any other question, questions regarding this? I would just like it on the record, uh, some of the additional capital improvements that we discussed. Um, that way the public knows what they are. Um, my recollection is that there were improvements to the turf, improvements to the parking area, uh, potential improvements to the lighting. I think it was a repair, possibly replacement of the roof. Um, were, there were other items we discussed. I can't recall all of them. And Jesse, I would like to also to add that we also included in them funds that there be money available 
uh, to put lights at the field was- used by girls softball at Rich Lou and uh, Galway, which would supply the only lit field for girls to use for softball and put them on equal footing with the uh, with the boys uh, in our township. Thank you, Joe. That was uh, the other one that I was missing. And, and that was all discussed at our meeting. Yes, yep. it was. Mr. Paizo, yes, should, should, should we put on the record that this was uh, an, exec, an exec session that we held to discuss this? We did. Um, yeah. I, I apologize if, if I wasn't clear at, at the outset, but I, uh, I began my presentation, or at least attempted to, to let the public know that we did meet in executive session on October 6th um, at the, and uh, with all of you to, to discuss these terms. So um, I apologize. Okay, sorry, sorry, I might have missed that, but I didn't. I just not, wanted to make sure. I, I may have, I may not have been clear. In my yeah, I, I do, Joe. I do think you did mention that it, it was to include improvements to the trifecta property, but I don't think it was mentioned that uh, uh, it would also include lights at uh, at, at Richlou and uh, Galway Field. You, you're, uh, you're, cor- you're correct, Mr. Knowles. Anticipated in in the in the transfer of funds out of the township um, trust fund and into the capital improvement fund would also be, along with the recreational and open space improvements for Trifecta, would also be funds for providing lighting to the uh, what is currently being referred to as the Lady Bombers Field at the Township Community Park. Um, and it, additional improvements. Uh, and, and any other improvements that, well, uh, lights for that field um, and any other improvements that would be necessitated by the installation of those lights and again, as Mr. Knowles indicated, uh, the, the hope and intent here is uh, at this point, there are no lighted fields in the township that are available specifically for girls softball and the township wanted to rectify that situation and, and, and make that field available specifically for that purpose. Mr. Mayor, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think you uh, have everything included there and uh, the important thing is we go along each item council will know each thing that we had to do out of that uh, 5 million cap including the girls uh, lighting on the softball field so that we'll keep in touch with all of those items as they come up because there'll be several all right gentlemen i accept a uh, motion at this time i'll make the motion mr gisselbeck that uh, it's a great opportunity for ben sound uh, to approve the uh, resolution as uh, as drafted so we have a motion on the floor. I'll second the motion. We have a second on the motion. Any additional discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 And against? Any abstentions? That is unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. And continuing on other business, I'm going to ask the council member if you would like to add something uh, to the uh, to this point. I want to start from the bottom up. We'll start with Jesse Sloan this time. Councilman. Uh, We are now in, uh, what is it, seven months of this pandemic. So I hope everyone is staying safe. I know it's a little awkward seeing this Hollywood Squares version of us. uh, But I do hope everyone is staying safe out there. Uh, Halloween is coming up. So, you know, uh, the kids will get out and and hopefully have a good time despite everything. Um, So just, again, everybody stay safe and healthy. I hope you're all well. I was thinking more of the Brady Bunch there. <laughs> That's a generational thing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then we'll go uh, from there. We go, uh, Councilman Uh I, I remember the Brady Bunch still. That's, uh, Three runs. Marsha. Um, I, I remember I don't, Marcia. What's that? You remember Marsha. Marsha, yeah. I remember them all, yeah. Uh, I, Mr. Kisbeck, I don't have any comments. Just to reiterate what Councilman Sloan had said, I hope I uh, hope everyone is uh, is, is staying uh, health, healthy and safe, um, and um, you know hopefully uh, hopefully we see an end of the pandemic here um, hopefully soon um, going into sometime next year. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening, Councilman Polari. Um, yes, Mr. President. I have no comments at this time. I'll echo uh, Ed and Jesse on the Halloween Halloween thing. Everybody be safe, and um, we're always here if anybody needs us. Okay, Councilman Knowles. Yes, I, I, I it, uh, hopefully uh, we'll be together. I don't know before Halloween, but be safe. Uh, continue to do what you have to do to keep you and your family and friends safe. 
certainly. And uh, it's a great thing, uh, as other people had said, that uh, we're going to provide uh, additional recreation to the community. And we're going to try a little bit over time uh, to uh, provide some other activities besides the soccer uh, uh, to the property uh, to be able to have other people participate uh, and enjoy uh, more open space in our township. So I think it's a great thing for the future, uh, for family, for, for, for uh, individuals, uh, hopefully senior citizens, and, uh, and we're talking about toddlers too, I hope. But uh, uh, that's a great thing, and uh, thanks for uh, uh, working as a team on this and getting this thing done. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, uh, uh, mention on the... Uh, on the soccer fields, uh, one of the things we didn't mention in there, and uh, I know Joe Knowles just came up with the playground that we intend to put there, and also walking pads, hopefully in the, in the near future, we get them done. So it'll be a, a thank council for all the work you've done on this and for all of us working together. It's a great amenity for Ben Salem Township and certainly the, the Trevos area. So uh, again, that's a uh, kudos and thank you. The other is uh, an echo of uh, Halloween's coming up. I don't think it'll be the same with uh, COVID out there. And uh, I hope they find ways to families to keep the kids happy somehow. And not, not talking about candy, but talking about having a good time for the holidays. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess we'll see each other uh, on a council meeting, I guess, uh, to November. And... Uh, are we staying on for a uh, executive session? We are. Okay. Yeah, All right. The thank you. And, meeting, uh, we'll be having an executive session. And just remember, my theme has always been teams win, and uh, what a great win for Ben Sound. Okay. You want to say anything, Joe? Okay. I'm going to finish up and conclude by uh, just uh, reiterating what everyone has said. Uh, the fact of the matter is, um, as council and mayor, we work together. We work to improve Ben Salem and to bring as many amenities to the citizens of Ben Salem as we possibly can. This is a, a, quite an expense that we're putting ourselves to, but it's something we believe is going to be an investment in the future of Ben Salem for our children and grandchildren and an opportunity that we just actually could not pass up on. And so we're all working on it together, and I think you're going to see quite an improvement with, the, uh, with that particular field noted for its expertise in the soccer soccer department and i think that's going to be even better once we take possession of it ben salem township so we're all happy with that i'm going to conclude the meeting by saying this meeting is adjourned this is my favorite thing to do